In this video, I'm gonna be telling you the three reasons on why I struggled to start a YouTube channel and what I am doing to fix that. Hey guys, what's going on? Aaron the Speaker here, and before we get started, I thought it'd be interesting to give you guys a little bit of a background onto why I feel like I'm credible to even talk about this subject. Well, to begin with, over the last 10 years, I've worked as a professional entertainer. I've worked for the companies such as the NHL, working as the Florida Panthers in-stadium arena host. I've worked for Florida Atlantic University as their division one arena host for football and basketball. I've worked for Major League Lacrosse as the arena host for the Florida Launch Lacrosse team. I have hosted events for the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I've traveled the country with Bang Energy, hosting their events all over the country. I have been hired by the Arthritis Foundation to do their national galas across the country. I've done a lot of public speaking in front of crowds ranging from 30,000 all the way down to two. Now, besides being a professional entertainer for the last 10 years, I was also a college professor. Even though I know I don't look like one, I taught communication and media studies. So that means I taught classes like public speaking, I taught intro to communication, I taught public relations, intro to mass media, journalism. So I have a strong background when it comes to understanding the media and also understanding communication and public speaking. So why have I struggled to start a YouTube channel? Well, to start off, I'm gonna give you three reasons and then we're gonna dive into them in more detail. The first reason, fear. The second reason is going to be technical skills and the third reason is income. So let's jump straight into the first one, fear. Now in the United States currently, and as of right now, you're able to have moderately open speech. I wouldn't say free speech because nothing is ever free. You can't say certain things and you will get shut down and banned as we see, but you have moderately open speech in which it's not like a communist country, an authoritarian country where if you say something or speak about something in the government or you critique somebody or a business, they will find you and you will be punished, whether it's disappearing, going to jail, being reprimanded, losing your job. And so fear is a big reason why I've struggled to start a YouTube channel because as a college professor teaching media studies, you learn a lot about media studies when you begin to dive in and look at it and you see that it's not always a good thing. Now, I know that they always try to sell social media and media as a way to connect human beings, but the problem is, is that they don't really teach media studies in school. So basically, the average person, if they see a million commercials a year, aren't really equipped to fight back from those advertisements, meaning they're attacking your subconscious, constantly getting you to wanna to buy, purchase, and kind of fall into this ideology. If you don't know what ideology is, look up the definition, please, or I'll add it in the link below. Now, after looking up the word ideology, you begin to realize that the media kind of shapes the way that you live your life. It kind of mirrors society while also influencing it. And if you don't think that the media influences you, well, we have a theory for that too. It's called third person effect, which basically says everyone knows that the media and advertising and commercials is persuasive, but they personally don't feel like it persuades them. And so when it comes to the fear of making a YouTube channel, I always worried about the things that I talked about, the things that I said. If I go against the grain too much, it will have consequences. Employers will see my video and not wanna hire me. Uh, the government can see my videos and start to watch me or censor me. And I can hurt myself or injure myself by if I say something at some point, it may not be advantageous for me later on. As we know with the examples with Kevin Hart not being able to host the Grammys because of a tweet he tweeted 10 years ago and the promotion of cancel culture and someone looking up something you made a long time ago. So if I would have started my YouTube channel at 20, 
I probably would have said a lot more crazy shit than I'd be saying right now at 32. So fear was a big reason for me to not do my YouTube channel because I was afraid that what was popular and being said at some point would become unpopular later on and I would get in trouble or crucified. And I was so scared of keeping a polished, protected image because I was working for companies like the NHL and because I was working for the NCAA and because I was working for Major League Lacrosse, I was afraid that speaking out and saying certain topics would hurt my overall brand or image and basically my little tiny digital fragmentation of Aaron the Speaker and it would stop me from getting work. So fear is the reason why I have not done a YouTube channel, but what I'm doing to counteract that is, well, 2020. 2020 has kind of taken away everything from everybody and everybody is kind of starting from scratch. I'm also being strategic on what I put on YouTube or what I put out on the airwaves or content as to make sure that it's not really based in an emotional decision. Now I know it's hard because most things you want to talk about, you're emotional about it, you're passionate, you desire to say it, you want to scream it from the top of the building to help, but it's not always the best case. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make these videos where they're educational, the tutorials, your how-to videos, because that's what really seems to be trending on YouTube and what really people seem to like to see on YouTube if it's not going to be comedy content, which I'm gonna be making too. The second reason is technical skills. Technical skills has stopped me a lot when it comes to starting a YouTube channel. The reason why is because when I got my master's in communication and media studies and mass media, yes, we learn about the media I taught, uh, film appreciation. I was teaching people about uh, lighting and positioning and camera angles and blocking. But just because you teach what those things evoke in people when they watch them, it doesn't mean you actually have the skills to be behind the camera knowing how to produce it. So a lot of what I've learned to even get to this point has been YouTube University. Videos like these that have helped me understand how to get a key light, how to get uh, frame lighting behind me, how to get the background behind me making it look good. And even now, I'm not really satisfied with my setup. I'm in my living room and I have, uh, th this is the best that I can do. And I've made probably 60 to 70 videos over the pandemic that I never released. But technical skills is something that really stops people from starting their YouTube channel and it stopped me. So what I would recommend is really diving down a rabbit hole of YouTube videos and starting with, um, there's so many out there, how to start a YouTube channel, YouTube channel for beginners, and begin to look at all the equipment, put it into a cart on Amazon, figure out what your budget is, and then begin to dive in and film. Film, 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 and delete. Don't post, don't post it right away film it and delete it because either way, it's not going to really help you or hurt you, but it can actually, you know, give you the confidence that you need to be able to make videos that you actually want to make instead of feeling rushed that you're missing out on not making videos. So technical skills is something that has stopped me from making my YouTube channel, but it's something that I'm fixing in the future by using YouTube university and just practicing filming. And the third and final reason of course is income. You need income to survive, everybody does. Now, fortunately for me, I've done a really good job of saving my money. And so when the pandemic hit in 2020, I was able to purchase new equipment, pay my rent, uh, be able to purchase food and living expenses while also not having to apply for jobs and work. And so I am also very fortunate because I, I saw these things coming. My father was all about saving your money and getting ready for a rainy day. Well, 2020 was a monsoon. And so when I saved my money, it allowed me to be able to invest in the time to make a YouTube channel. But money is a big reason why I stopped and didn't do my YouTube channel was because I was getting booked to do jobs that didn't require YouTube. I was getting hired as an entertainer to speak in front of people. I was making commercials for other people. I never had to do the producing myself. And when it comes to a YouTube channel, a lot of the times you are the producer, the talent, the editor, uh, the marketer, you're everything. And I think that it's actually a good beneficial skill if you want to actually get into film and production. But if you don't, and you just wanna be a doctor or a nurse and have a YouTube channel, 
I would say stick to the very basics, the cheapest equipment you could possibly get, and then build up from there. Now, I know most YouTube channels say that, but for me, I love buying electronic equipment, so that's been one of my big downfalls is that I buy, I buy, I buy, and I never actually use it because it goes back to point number two, I didn't have the technical skills to know how to use it. So when it comes to the money aspect of it, you gotta realize that making these YouTube videos, as most YouTube creators say, take years. And most likely, if I had to guess, I would say only 20% of YouTubers make money off of their YouTube channel to actually be able to live off of it. It could be even less. I could be wrong. It could be way overestimating. It could be 5%, um, just like professional sports. Most people who want to play professional sports, only two or 3% actually make enough money to live off of it. So those are the three reasons why I've really struggled to start my YouTube channel. And I know this video wasn't extremely helpful, but it was helpful for me to kind of get this out and, and get these videos off my chest because a lot of times I sit at home and I want to make videos and I want to record and I don't because I'm self-conscious, I'm afraid, I don't know the technical skills and I want money. But going out and recording is kind of the only way to do it. So I hope that this video is somewhat helpful, but I think it was more helpful for me to actually make it than it was for you to actually watch it. But I hope that the following videos in the future get better and better because that's kind of the part and the journey of YouTube. And I hope I don't say anything that gets me in trouble or thrown in jail in the future. So wish me luck. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions that you would like me to answer. That would really help me with video topics on what you guys want to know about media, communication, comedy. And I appreciate you guys watching. So I'll see you guys later. I'm Aaron the Speaker. And thanks for watching my videos. All right, peace.